In this video, I'm going to break down in very, very basic terms how and why Robinhood's IPO netted me 119% in five days. So stick around for the whole video and I bet you'll learn something. Before I get started, if you're new here, please, can you just scroll down and hit that subscribe button for me? Congrats, now you're not new. If you're not new and you're not subscribed, we just can't be friends, I'm sorry. Also, while you're down there, you might as well hit that thumbs up button because it just puts a smile on my nose. All right, so let's break down this bad boy. Let's say I have a giant cookie and a lot of people hate my cookie and a lot of people love my cookie, okay? But this cookie is worth $100. It's an expensive, delicious cookie, okay? So bear with me. I want to give you guys an opportunity at ownership of my cookie. If you like my cookie, if you find any value in the cookie, you'll, you'll want ownership of that cookie, right? So let's say I cut that cookie into 100 pieces. Let's say I just keep 25 pieces for myself and I go to a market. I go to the cookie market and I say, okay, everybody, I have 75 slices of this cookie available. Remember that my cookie was worth $100 whole. That means each 100 slice that I have now is worth $1 each. So I go to the market and I say, hey, I'm selling each slice for $1. Now there are a few scenarios that you should take into consideration. There are a few things that can happen here. The first scenario is everybody loves my cookie and they all pour in and they buy up all of the slices and all 75 slices are gone within the first day. Now the second scenario is people are kind of unsure. Uh, they don't really know what my cookie's all about. They don't know what it tastes like. They don't know my story. Um, let's say only 20 people buy my slices and I have to come back to the market the next day and I have to keep trying to sell the cookie slices. The third scenario, uh, which doesn't really ever happen, but I go and nobody wants to buy any of my slices. <laughs> so I'm stuck with everything. Now, let's talk about scenario number one. If everybody buys all of my slices, what happens? Everybody bought all of my slices for $1 each. Now I have no more slices available. Now it's up to the people who bought those slices to decide if they want to keep or if they want to sell those slices to other people. Now, people heard that my cookies sold like hotcakes. People heard that the my cookies are all hyped up. Now everybody wants my cookies. But I have no more cookies to sell. So people ask around, hey, do you have any of those slices available? I really want to buy those slices of cookies from you. I heard they're, they're amazing. I'll buy it from you for $1.50. I know you bought it for a dollar. But I, I, I see the value in it. I'll buy it for $1.50. No, you know what? I'll buy it for $2. No, I'll buy it for $3. So you see what's happening here? Supply is limited and the demand is high. So my cookie slices are now worth more than what I sold it to at the market. Now, this is what I look for when a company first IPOs, supply and demand. When it IPOs, it's a clean slate. It's very easy to see the supply and demand and the volume and the price. How many shares are available? It's called the float. How many people are buying those shares? That's the, the volume. How fast are people buying those shares? That kind of gives you an idea of demand. How much are they paying for it? That also ties into demand and the, pl the price for everything. So Robinhood IPO'd and they traded their entire float the first day. They traded half of the float within the first 10 minutes. People bought all of those slices of cookies. The next day, people came back to the market and wanted more and more slices of those cookies. Oh my God, did you hear about the, the Robinhood IPO? I, I need some of that. I want some of that. People who bought it the first day then had to decide if they want to sell it to the people who want to buy it the second day and the third day and the fourth day. The more and more people talked about it, the more the demand went up, people would pour into the market, the more people were willing to pay for each slice, the more the price goes up. Now, why doesn't this happen to every IPO, you might ask? 
Well, Robinhood was interesting because they IPO'd without a premium. That was their actual true share price. If you look at other IPOs, they don't actually go directly to the market to sell their cookie slices. They need help facilitating those transactions. So you can you can think of it as, I only had 100 slices so I could sell it easily, but if I had a million slices, I, I would need help with that. I need a warehouse. <laughs> I, need, I need somebody to help me provide that liquidity, that smooth transaction. So some companies, they sell their cookie slices to banks and institutions and other people who can help facilitate those transactions. So let's say somebody IPOs with a million slices of cookies for $1, not to me and you, but they sell it to the big boys. They sell it to people who can help hold all of that supply and help facilitate those, tra those transactions. So those big boys, they then take all of those shares that they bought for $1 and then they turn around, they go to the cookie market and they sell it for $1.50 and $2 before we even had a chance to buy it for $1. That's the premium I'm talking about that Robinhood did not have. Those, those institutions and those big banks and those liquidity providers, they add a markup and a premium. Um, so it, it hits the market with an already inflated price. Robinhood, love it or hate it, had a very successful IPO because they IPO'd without a premium. They had a pretty low float. They had a lot of demand and they sold out of their supply. And basic economics would tell you that would send the price soaring as it did. So I bought Robinhood shares when I was able to identify the fact that there is a lot of demand on the first day. I got in around like $35 or so and I made my investment free today by selling out a bit of my um, initial investment at 119% gain. So none of this is advice or recommendation. Definitely consult with a financial advisor before you make any decisions, but I hope this was able to break down some of the top level beginner friendly insight on how IPOs kind of work and, and why it why the price does what it does. So if you guys like content like that, please make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any other future videos like this. Um, let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if you want me to address anything and make sure you hit that like button because it means a lot to me and you mean a lot to me. So I love you and I'll catch you guys on the next video.